If you're looking for the full working out of these questions, then you've come to the right place. And if you don't want to listen to the explanation, you can simply mute my video and crank up the speed to times two because you do not want to waste your time because I know how precious it can be when exams are coming up. All right, so the first question, the coefficients of x squared and x cubed in the expansion of open brackets 3 minus 2x, close the brackets to the power of 6, are a and b respectively. Find the value of a over b. So now if you've been watching my videos for a while, you'd know that I always write down what we know and what we need to find. In this case, we know that a is x squared and b is x cubed, as in the coefficient, and uh, we have to find a over b. So how you're gonna expand is going to be by using this method. So you're gonna take the number of the exponent, basically the exponent in this case is six. So you're gonna place six at the top, then you're gonna place zero. You're gonna start with zero, of course, then one, two, three, and so on. So six over zero multiplied by the first term, which is three. Three, you're gonna put that to the power of six. Now you're gonna add six and then you're gonna put one at the bottom because we're gonna work that out using the calculator later. So then you multiply that by three to the power of five. We're gonna subtract one from that term. Now the second term comes in, which is negative two X. You're gonna place one there. And then the only reason I didn't place negative 2x in the first one is because anything to the power of 0 is just 1. And when you multiply anything with 1, it's just that number. All right, and so you notice how 3 is to the power of 5 and negative 2x is to the power of 1. When you add them together, it still gives you 6. And then you continue on that little like uh, pattern. You're going to subtract 1 from the first term and add 1 to the second. So then here you see 6c0. The c is like combination, right? So 6c0 is equal to 1, you're going to place that in your calculator, so you're going to click on 6, then you're going to go shift, and you're going to click on the divide button, because you see on top of it, it says ncr. And then you continue on, you're going to multiply these numbers together, and then you'll end up with 729 minus 2916x, plus what we're going to find out right now using the calculator, and that would be the coefficient of x squared, and what is the coefficient of x squared? That is a. All right, and then we're gonna continue it on to find B. And of course, you don't have to continue until the last thing here. I stopped at X cubed because, well, we don't need to go any further. So you can just place three dots afterwards. All right, so the coefficient of X squared is 4,860, and that is A. Then we're gonna find B, which is negative 4,320. Make sure you don't mess up the sign for that actually plays a really big part. Now you're gonna do A over B, just divide by each other, and the answer is negative nine over eight. And that is a total of four marks, you guys, we're done. All right, so the second question. Relative to an origin O, the position vectors of points A and B are given by O, A, three, negative six, and P. The order is three is X, negative six is Y, and P is Z, as in the axis, X axis, Y axis, and the Z axis. OB is 2, negative 6, and negative 7, and angle AOB is 90 degrees. All right, so now we need to find what P is, and since it's equal to 90, 90 degrees, we can use a formula I will show you guys later. But what we're going to do is first multiply X with X and Y with Y and Z with Z. So 3 times 2, negative 6 times negative 6, and whatever, so on, you're going to add them. So you'll get 6 plus 36 minus 7p and you're going to equal it to 0 because using that formula, cosine 90 will give you 0. Alright, so then um, you're going to work it out and then you're going to find the answer for p and that is 6. Simply simplify. Alright, so now, um, so yeah, the formula, make sure you memorize it. But, I mean, you don't actually have to memorize it because it's there in the formula sheet that they give you during the examination. But it's good to know so you not waste time going through the sheet trying to find that formula. Alright, so now part 2, II. The point C is such that OC is 2 thirds of OA. Find the unit vector in the direction of BC. So, I like to draw this little diagram of where the vectors could possibly be. So, O is the original and then A and B. And you have C, we know that it's 2 thirds of OA. All right, so now we just need to do the math. We know that OA is 3, negative 6, and P, and we found what P is, which is 6. Now we're just going to multiply by 2 over 3, and that will give us OC. 
basically where C is from O, so ignore the little O next to the OC in the, di in the diagram that I drew. So OC is basically 2, negative 4, and 4. So now we need to find the direction B all the way to C. It's just basically mapping, just find out where you're going, all right? And you're going to follow the arrow. So we're going to go from BO to OC. So basically, we already know what OB is. We're going to do the opposite. Uh, the opposite as in you're going to have the opposite sign. So it's going to be whatever was positive will be negative and whatever was negative will be positive. And then you're going to add OC to it and that will give you BC. That is 0, 2, and 11. So now we're trying to find the magnitude and what we're going to do is square everything that we found basically and we're going to add it together and find the square root. So 0 squared plus 2 squared plus 11 squared under the square root is under the square root 1, 2, 5. Now we're not done yet because they asked us to find the unit vector. So we're going to divide everything by that magnitude. That's why we put 1 on top because anything times 1 is just that thing. And that is it for this question. So now question 3i. Prove the identity that 1 plus cosine theta over sine theta plus sine theta over 1 plus cosine theta is similar to 2 over sine theta. Well, of course, I'm going to stop saying theta too much. I'm just going to say sine and cosine because it's just going to be a mouthful. So tan, these are just like some rules that you should know. So tan is equal to sine over cosine. And another one is sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. And you can just like, you can work out these formulas and make whatever you want the subject of that formula. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is... Um, try to get a common denominator. So basically, sine theta, you're gonna change that to one plus cosine theta as well. So you're gonna multiply the first fraction by one plus cosine theta, and the second fraction by sine theta, all right? So just watch as I do that. So that will give you one plus cosine squared plus sine squared over sine theta times 1 plus cosine theta because we, we have the same denominator so then you can just add them together and here I'm just going to expand it simply because it just makes it easier that way so 1 plus cosine theta times 1 plus cosine theta so 1 times 1 then 1 times cosine then cosine times 1 and then cosine times cosine that will give you 1 plus 2 cosine theta plus cosine squared theta and then plus sine squared theta and over the denominator that we got. So we know that cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1 so we're going to just get rid of the whole thing and just put plus 1. So 1 plus 2 cosine theta plus 1 over the denominator is just going to be 2 cosine theta plus 2 over the denominator. So then what we're going to do now is find what's common between them. And what we know that's common between the two is the number two or the fact that it can be multiplied by two. So we'll take two on the outside. So it's gonna be two multiplied by one plus cosine theta over the denominator. Because if you expand it, it will still give you the same thing, two plus two cosine theta. Now, one plus cosine theta and one plus cosine theta on both denominators will just have to cross off and then you get the answer of two over sine theta and that is it, a total of three marks. Now on to the second part. Hence, solve the equation of what we first got equaling to 3 over cosine theta, for which theta is between 0 degrees and 360 degrees. So we are going to do two, 2 sine theta is equal to 3 cosine theta. See, if you didn't know how to solve the first part, you can still solve the second part. So we're going to cross multiply here. So 3 sine theta times 2 cosine theta. Then we're going to move the cosine theta to the bottom or basically to the other side. It's going to be divide because when you move the multiplication from one side to the other, you're going to end up dividing. So 3 sine theta over cosine theta is equal to 2. And we already told you sine over cosine is tan. So 3 tan theta is equal to 2. Get rid of that 3 by moving it to the other side. So then tan theta is equal to 2 over 3. Now we only want theta itself. So we're going to move tan to the other side. So it's going to be tan inverse 2 over 3. And that is 33.7 degrees. We're going to round it up because three significant figures, we shouldn't have too many and too little. So we have this little graph thing, ASTC or all science teachers are cool, whatever you want to say. So A is for all of them, S stands for sine, T for 10 and C for cosine. And that is where 
those are positive. So here tan is positive. The only place that is positive is in the A, which is all, and the tan part. So we have 33.7 degrees. Now what we're going to do, these are rules you should know, is 180 plus that 33.7. And that is 213.7 degrees. For sine, it's 180 minus A. And for C, it's 360 minus A. You can find these online anywhere. And yeah, that's a total of three marks. Congrats. All right, so the final question for this video, 4A. An arithmetic progression has a first term of 32, a fifth term of 22, and a last term of negative 28. Find the sum of all the terms in the progression. All right, so again, write down what we know and what we need to find. So A is 32. You need to know the general rule for an arithmetic progression, which is or basically the formula, not the rule. A plus n minus 1 times d. So a is the first term, n is the number of terms, the first term, second term, third term, and d is the difference between the first, the, the two terms. So in this case, we know a, and we have the fifth term, so we can find out what d is, right? So we're going to do 32 plus n minus 1, so 5 minus 1 is 4, so 32 plus 4 times d is equal to 22, right? Because the fifth term, like they told us, is equal to 22. Then we're going to solve for D. And we're going to find out. So we move 32 to the other side. And then it gives you 4D is equal to negative 10. And D, you're going to divide that 4, that negative 10 by 4. And you're going to end up with negative 2.5. And that is the difference. So now we've found that. Now we just need to find the sum. Actually, before that. We need to know how many terms there are. They just told us last term, but we don't know. Maybe there's 200 terms, right? So a plus n minus 1 to the power of d, right? So 32 plus n minus 1 times negative 2.5. Always have one um, variable that we do not know. We can have more than that. Is equal to negative 28, and we're just going to solve for n now. We're going to expand the brackets, and we're going to solve. So 34.5 minus 2.5n is equal to negative 28. Move the 34.5 to the other side, and then you're going to divide that by negative 2.5, and that will give you n. And I believe n is equal to 25. So there is a total of 25 terms in this whole progression. All right, so now we try to find the sum of all of the terms, and this is a formula you should know. So n over 2 multiplied by 2a plus n minus 1d. So, sum of 25. So 25 over 2 times 2 times a, which is 32. So 2 times 32 plus n minus 1, we know is 25. So 24 times negative 2.5. All right. So 25 over 2, open bracket 64 plus 24 times negative 2.5, which is negative 60. All right. Don't forget the negative there. And now 25 over 2 multiplied by 4, and that gives you 20. We are done with this part of the question, and that is a total of 4 marks. Make sure to show all your working out. You're better off getting a 3 out of 4 than a 1 out of 4, because you do get a mark for your answer, but that's only one mark. But you get most of your marks from the actual working out. So make sure you show all your working out and get those, you know, marks, all right? So part B, each year school allocates a sum of money for the library. The amount allocated each year increases by 2.5% of the amount allocated the previous year. In 2005, the school allocated $2,000. Find the total amount allocated in the years 2005 to 2014 inclusive. So now here, you want to just do 2014 minus 20, 2005 because then it'll give you 9. But in fact, there's 10 terms, so you make sure you add them. So I just wrote it out in this case, but usually you just add a 1 to it. You know whenever they say inclusive all right so a is 2000 like we said now r is the rate because this is a geometric progression so each time you're going to multiply you're not adding or subtracting or basically yeah adding or subtracting um, for geometric you're either multiplying or dividing all right so the rate you're going to change the percentage to a decimal so 2.5 to 5 by 100 and then because it's increasing you're going to add one to that answer so the rate is 1.025 so now this is the formula for the sum of a geometric progression. So a multiplied by r to the power of n minus 1 over r minus 1. So 2000 open brackets 1.025 multiplied 
to the power of 10 minus 1 divided by 1.025 minus 1. And that will give you $22,400. We're going to round it up to three significant figures because they never really want such large numbers unless they actually tell you. And you usually take the um, smallest number and it's usually three significant figures. So unless stated otherwise, just go with three significant figures. You're better off that way. And yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you guys learned something and you found it helpful. And stay tuned for the second part where I will be solving questions 5 to 8. And then the third part, which is questions 9 to... I believe there's 11 questions in this paper. That's all, so I'll see you guys next time. Bye!